Welcome back to the emerging threats and the technologies. The next speaker, Alice Silde, will be talking about the artificial intelligence. She has an academic background in computer security and forensics. However, she's been involved in offensive security ever since. Her interests are, and she's experienced in, software development, web and mobile applications, infrastructure assessments, research, education, and training. She is now a security team lead at Accenture Latvia, and she'll be talking about the artificial intelligence and machine learning. Please welcome Alice. Um, hello. Um, welcome to my talk. Uh, I think it's going to be the first one I give to quite so many people. Um, so please forgive the nerves. Um, so yes, basically it was a really good introduction. I am a pen tester at Accenture. Um, so I know a couple of things about security, not all of them. Um, I did learn about AI quite recently, uh, so I don't know quite so many things about AI, um, but I've learned a lot in especially the last couple of months when I've been doing research for this. And uh, I, there is a lot I want to tell you. So I'm going to be rushing through this presentation quite a lot, and there probably won't be any time for questions at the end, so please take a note of my email address or find me in the hall in between talks. I'm really happy to discuss any of this um, with you. So yeah, that's our agenda, and yeah, I'm going to skip through a lot of the introductions uh, to AI, so please bear with me, and uh, uh, in the end I will try to introduce a methodology which is a bit off topic for um, creating um, an AI-based solution, um, but maybe I won't have enough time to expand on it. So basically, what is artificial intelligence? It is important to understand that machine learning, while being used interchangeably with uh, artificial intelligence, isn't all that it is. Um, uh, machine learning is merely a small part of a whole conglomerate of, of diverse things that comprise artificial intelligence. Um, and there's quite a lot that uh, machine learning gives to it. It's a very important part and you will find it in most artificial intelligence solutions. Uh, but machine learning in itself is basically our computational methods for acquiring new knowledge or improving the ways we organize this knowledge we already have. While artificial intelligence is the, our general way and uh, desire to simulate human cognition and tasks. Uh, artificial intelligence can very broadly be uh, categorized into strong and weak or narrow and general. There may be other classifications you have heard of, but basically general AI is what we strive for. Is what isn't quite here yet is our ability to emulate uh, human cognition, while uh, narrow or weak AI is how we emulate the way humans do things rather than the way we think. So it's uh, very suited for doing some kind of narrow, specific tasks. And machine learning uh, can be, there's a couple of types presented in here. Um, there's obviously more, but uh, the main ones are supervised and unsupervised, while supervised is for classification. You give it labeled data, then you give it some new data, and it applies uh, labels that it has learned based on some principle. Um, unsupervised is when you just feed it data and the algorithm learns some kind of patterns uh, in itself and tries to cluster similar things together. And it, it's very important how you tune this thing because it will, um, it will learn to, to cluster things together based on whatever you tell it to do. And there's going to be patterns in everything. Um, it, it just depends on the quality of these patterns. And reinforcement learning is a really, really good one. Um, it allows you to give feedback to your model, whether or not what is learned is good or not, and adjust your model and tune it to a specific task. Um, it's, a, it's used a lot in teaching AI to play games. For some reason, it's a very popular thing to do. 
Uh, neural networks isn't quite machine learning. Um, it's basically a way to simulate how our brain works with artificial neurons, but that's about where the biological uh, resemblance stops. Um, uh, then there's deep neural networks where a lot more of machine learning comes in because it's also widely known as uh, deep learning. Uh, it's where you have uh, two or more processing layers for your uh, neural network and some kind of machine learning algorithms are usually also applied to, to make some sense out of everything. But the gist of it all is that we don't quite understand how machine learning works exactly so a lot of the results are unpredictable and even if you get the results that you expect you don't really know why and whether you get them for the right reasons um, basically you take a problem you take some data uh, you apply some math to it and see what comes out and then you fine-tune it to get the results you actually want um, there are many different algorithms. Uh, biologically themed algorithms are very popular nowadays. Um, and a lot of them also, they're not, they emulate the way our biology works, but they don't quite um, do it the same way. So at, at the very base, it's still math. It's still the fundamental machine issue of the fact that the machines don't do what we want them to do, they do what we tell them to do, and that's important to understand while, while applying any of this technology. And each of these algorithms basically has their own benefits, so it's better applicable for specific tasks. And I won't go deep into this, I, I do know more about this, so if, if you do want to ask me later. And uh, you can basically think, uh, of this like uh, Linux versus Windows. Um, whether you implement artificial intelligence or not, um, it's kind of like Linux let you do whatever you want. So it as assumes that you are the user and you are smarter than the machine, so you can do whatever and you face the consequences on your own. Um, that's life without AI, and Windows is more like life with AI, where it takes control of a lot of your actions and doesn't let you do some specific things. It basically assumes that it knows better than you do, um, but then you can always blame um, any kind of mischief on Windows and don't take the responsibility for it. So now I'm going to talk about... Um, basically what we already have in terms of AI in general. Um, so why do we need it? We want to solve problems. We have a lot of data. The complexity of everything is increasing. And we want simple solutions to our everyday problems. Also, we're lazy and we want machines to uh, kind of do a lot of work for us. Um, we, want, we want the problem-solving capabilities, basically. Um, and so we're teaching machines to make decisions now. Uh, and AI algorithms are very precise and very good at finding patterns in data very quickly, something that humans don't really excel at. Uh, and the precision isn't as good as machines can achieve. Um, and the, these algorithms are also very good at dealing with very high dimensional problems which is also something humans can't really do. A human analyst can keep in mind only a couple of criteria based on which they analyze the data in front of them. Uh, an AI system can keep an indefinite amount of these criteria uh, and uh, perform its analysis based on this, but it, it stems a lot of other problems, which I may mention later. Um, and basically, machine learning uh, produces a function, an algorithm, a way to do something rather than a predefined set of results. So these pro programs are re reusable on different kinds of scenarios and different kinds of problems. And also we want really, really quick response. We want to be always online and have this real-time response to everything because of our fast-paced and interconnected world, basically. Um, some of the current capabilities of AI are really astounding. You may have heard of a lot of these, um, but uh, just to reiterate, first we have intuitive games, 
It's, it's something that we've taught AI to do, uh, is play games. And it requires some human intuition, uh, especially in the latest achievements like AlphaGo, where uh, finally a computer was able to beat the world's strongest players of Go, one of the most complicated games in the world that requires a lot of intuition to, to play and win. And uh, in the latest international, uh, OpenAI beat uh, the Dota champions, basically, in, in a one versus one game of Dota, which is also quite impressive. But please keep in mind that after that, uh, OpenAI was beaten when it was uh, open to the audience to, to play. So basically, people, normal people, not professional players, were able to beat this AI. And uh, then there is algorithms for optimizing functions, which will be applicable across a wide range of things. Uh, computers can now, apparently, design and build products. We have um, design capabilities where artificial intelligence can produce a product based on a set of criteria and requirements fed to it. Um, and then we can use robotics to also autonomously without human intervention, build this product. So we can, we can build and design things that we weren't able to do due to our physical or mental limitations. And now AI helps us do these things, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, and uh, AI can also be used in, in publishing, writing simple stories, which some news agents definitely do. So wherever uh, a lot of research isn't required, um, you can use um, AI to just generate a, a simple news story. Um, it saves a lot of time, probably. And uh, medical diagnosis is another thing that's uh, a very widespread, and you may have heard in the news, uh, especially Watson. And I've looked into it, and Watson hasn't made a known medical mistake so far, so yay. Uh, Accenture used uh, Watson in one of uh, our big projects, uh, the Switzerland Index recently, to perform research. And it's said to have reduced the research efforts by two-thirds and the time necessary to perform this research, as well as potentially improved the, uh, um, the reliability of these results and the objectivity um, also because there is no human bias involved in performing such research. And then there's things like intelligent assistance, um, uh, computer vision, and all these other hype words. And just to say, there is quite some um, hype going on. Uh, there's some data to show that enterprises are very readily boarding the hype train of all things intelligent. And it may just be too soon, despite how impressive these... Uh, developments are, um, because we don't really understand the underlying requirements of the business, so whether or not artificial intelligence is actually necessary to solve our problems, uh, and the operational costs involved. So you need maintenance, you still need human resources to do and supervise and maintain and train this thing. You, you need to really understand the solution you're deploying, otherwise you're just squandering all the opportunities offered by it. Um, and there's a lot of like, clever POCs designed to work in a lab, which may never really meet your expectations in a real environment. There is really much to work on in, in the domain of artificial intelligence and actually correctly implementing it to, to get the benefits that we need. Um, there's obviously data privacy considerations uh, with things like digital assistance and proactive search and anything that provides context to your everyday interaction with computing. It's just what, what kind of data are we allowed to collect and store and, and track? Because at the moment it probably tracks more than you would like, but as long as you're not aware of it, it's okay, right? Um, and there's uh, difficulties in dealing with ambiguous data still. Uh, it's something that we're still teaching AI to cope with. Uh, but it is a big step in, in, in overcoming this where we'll get closer to actually building uh, general AI, something that will be applicable to, to any task, regardless of, of the algorithm and regardless of the solution uh, actually put there. Um, but AI is here to stay, definitely. 
uh, we're working on it, we're implementing it everywhere, and we'll see a lot more of it. We're just adding intelligence to things we already have. We're making them smarter and stronger, and, and, and basically making us better at doing things. And, and actually, our world is already really fast. We're just accelerating it. And uh, technically, while, while cheating some people out of their jobs, we're creating more work and more things to do. And, and I don't believe we will ever run out of, of work, really. Uh, we're just, we'll just make ways to, to increase this workload on us. Uh, we're transforming the workplace and the economy because with things like digital assistance, the workplace is very different because a lot of people can work from home. With things like autonomous driving, people can be productive while on their commute to work. Um, so it's, it's radically changing the way cities will be developing and, and things like that. AI has been in the works since maybe like the 80s. So why now? Why is it, why is it such a hype now? Basically because uh, it's more affordable, more available. We have more computing power. We, we, we can actually uh, develop this further. Uh, now getting to the interesting parts. Um, AI and security. Attackers can also utilize these wonderful, amazing, magical technologies. Um, because they will be in control of very important aspects of our lives. There's a lot of damage that can be caused. Malevolent goals can be either designed in AI, so AI can be tasked with malicious activity and imagine the impact it will have. If we can already outperform humans uh, in, in many mundane tasks, imagine what AI tasked with malicious activity could do. And uh, even uh, President Obama has a uh, uh, ex-president um, expressed his uh, concern about AI, for example, being tasked with finding nuclear launch codes and launching attacks. It can do that. It's it's not something out of uh, science fiction anymore. It's it's something a real real danger. Uh, so there's these unknown and unpredictable vectors that that we um, we can't really consider, but we should bear in mind. And machine ethics still face many challenges, uh, basically, and 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 uh, ethical models being very ambiguous. And humans aren't very ethical creatures. We can't nail that down. So what are our chances with with AI? Then there's things like AI failure. AI is a very complicated system in itself, and every complicated system will fail. Every system designed to do a thing will fail to reliably do this thing. That's, that's been shown many times. Um, testing and debugging these systems is also very, very difficult at the moment, if not impossible. And uh, it, it's difficult to monitor what exactly they're doing and why. AI can also be used to defeat our AI-enabled defenses. A, a model of AI can be trained to devise how your AI defenses work and defeat them. It's something already widely done with spam filters and uh, similar things. Um, basically, uh, there's even Metasploit modules that uh, can produce adversarial samples to enable you to attack uh, AI-enabled defenses. And it, it's, it's really amazing. And uh, even if you don't know what model it is, you can deduce it based on the task it's performing or, again, by probing the, mod uh, the model and using its outputs to train your own AI attack system. That's in a very, very, very basic way. And currently, we're already augmenting malware capabilities. Attackers can automate a lot of their tasks, making their attacks so much quicker and making the attackers seem almost ubiquitous. Um, we can automatically scan for vulnerabilities, for example, and in a much more intelligent way than our current security software does. And there's a big, big gap in our defensive skills. Our AI professionals are not trained to, to deal with AI-enabled attacks. And our AI defenses are not trained in adversarial contexts, which introduces a huge vulnerability. And there's quite a lot of examples of tools already being developed 
and most of these come from uh, researchers and research labs and our prototypes, but they're there. They're a good base for, for doing something like Nmap clustering, for example, lets you uh, easily review your uh, scan results uh, and obtain some kind of useful knowledge from them. Uh, having too many results isn't really uh, an issue as much anymore. Um, Deep Hack is one interesting uh, tool that automatically, kind of like the, the AI game playing uh, things, it learns to hack uh, an, a, a database without any prior security knowledge. It's said to have something like 200 lines of Python code and yeah, no underlying security context and it is able to exploit um, a blind-based uh, SQL attack on its own. But it does start from a very kind of low level and at, at first it seems not, not quite so intelligent when it attempts to exploit these things, um, but it gets there. Um, and yeah, there's many more. Each one of these uh, proposals uh, introduces many ideas for, for doing further work like uh, intelligent application fuzzing, uh, application uh, intelligent uh, password brute forcing, for example. Imagine how much quicker you can brute force a password if you're actually applying some kind of reasoning to the way you're doing it. So, um, yeah, just just think about this. Um, so basically, uh, the only way we can defend against intelligence systems is, is by applying intelligence to our defense. And while I've already said that defenses aren't secure against AI attacks, it's still something that we need to strive for and improve. But the good news is that everything the attackers can use, we can use. That's essentially what pen testing is, right? Um, we, we behave like, like attackers. We use their own tools against them. Um, there's a lot of security challenges that can be solved using uh, machine learning and other AI capabilities. Uh, we can optimize our resources, we can reduce the time necessary for efficient attack response uh, by reducing the number of false positives and allowing our teams to focus only on the important alerts. Um, we can cover more scenarios, even scenarios we haven't thought of because, well, humans are flawed. We can't think of everything, but computers definitely can. They can cover this space that we, we, we just couldn't be able to cover. And uh, we can feed back our, uh, um, we can feed back what we gather from the results back to our model and improve it so, and continuously tune it, and we can make our tools give us more context around an issue that's been identified uh, in order to understand why, where it has occurred, and therefore make any kind of remediation more successful and more efficient. Uh, we already see a lot of AI in our security as, as clever security add-ons, as working together with our existing SIEM solutions. Um, and in our software development life cycles, we have automated security testing um, and things towards AI and also actual AI capabilities. Um, there are some tools also, and I like that this list is actually longer than the one uh, with hacking tools, um, uh, that already exist uh, in terms of uh, readily available tools, prototypes, and models. And again, if you want to find out more about these, do contact me afterwards, um, because there is more. Uh, so basically, if we have all this in intelligent power, then, then why are we still facing the issues of pre-AI era? Where are, our, where are the results, basically, of applying artificial intelligence to defense? Well, there's still much to work on in terms of AI uh, in security. There is lack of skills. Data is always a big, big problem. Uh, the issue of dimensionality and actually finding the good features to focus our machine learning algorithms on uh, is a big, big struggle. For one, um, uh, the thing is that uh, we really don't uh, have attack-free data. 
for example. Oh, there's some predictions. So AI is basically here to stay. It's going to be used in AI tools for defense, for attack. It's going to be deployed in a lot of defensive tools, but the last one, uh, by 2020, uh, sophisticated criminals will be able to defeat 80% of our advanced AI-enabled analytics and defense. Some potential solutions exist to, to a lot of these problems. Uh, for example, with the lack of data, we can try simulations. Some s speculate that simulations aren't, aren't good enough for this kind of thing. Um, but I think we can use something like reverse honeypots to generate attack-free data um, and use honeypots to generate attack data um, and somehow deal with this problem. Because the big vendors aren't really sharing their information. They, and uh, current solutions are all trained on the same data sets that are available because, again, it's so difficult to get good data. Um, we have limitations in, in learning and in prior knowledge and providing context. This is where we could use things like uh, expert systems, uh, using ambient knowledge, using things like uh, endocrine immune systems to orchestrate our different AI-enabled and classic uh, security tools to gain more of this context um, and defeat this uh, kind of learning curve that even reinforcement algorithms face when they start learning a new task. They started from zero, they started from scratch, while they could have faced something similar before and they could use this knowledge to, to actually be better at, at what they do from, from the first step. And uh, obviously we need to address the skills gap as well by providing more training to security experts because without training our security experts in this, we won't really be able to uh, uh, to face these challenges. And I think I don't have any more time to tell you about my uh, great approach to, to designing um, intelligence systems. Uh, uh, and in, in my case, it's uh, a proposal for analysis of security findings. And this slide actually demonstrates why we need something like this, is that this is your average automated tool output. And what I want to propose is uh, a solution for reviewing these and, and analyzing them and uh, making some kind of order in, in this and reducing the number of false positives, uh, applying more intelligent analysis, which will essentially, in the end, hopefully, uh, enable us to potentially discover new and better ways to uh, perform some kind of attacks against our systems and uh, make our systems better by knowing how these attacks are performed because, well, the hackers are, are ahead of us. They are going to learn these things before we do and we need to kind of try and, and be, be ahead of them by using uh, emerging technologies to, to give us this advantage. Um, and I thank you for your attention. And... Uh, there is no time for questions, as I anticipated. Oh, no, there is. There is time for questions. <laughs> but first, give applause to Alice. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Please. Hi. Uh, how, uh, how are you to predict when uh, attackers with I, uh, AI will be so strong when you need in defense use AI because without AI in defense you will be worthless, you can defend. Well, the good news is that most big corporations already implement a lot of intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems that utilize AI, so we have some basic lines of defense uh, against attackers using AI to try and defeat uh, our, our uh, defense systems. Um, and, well, how, how you're going to be able to tell that, that point when we need, like, when you will be able to tell is going to be too late, so you kind of need to anticipate that they're going to be using this before we actually need it, before, before they're actually good with, with AI. So we need to think about this now, really. Thank you very much. Again, applauses to Alice, and there's some gift for you as well.
Thank you so much.